Joining us right now is the president of the uh, of the committee for a responsible federal budget, Maya McGinnis. Maya, it's good to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Nice to be with you all. Would you support adding any of those changes that the president just tweeted about to the current House and Senate bills? Well, I support anything that will help pay for the bill because as it's crafted right now, the purpose of tax reform, of course, is to really unleash some growth, grow the economy. But the fact that the biggest pay for in the bill is borrowing really uh, is a problem for growth. So I support things that are going to help pay for it. But I do worry about things that are going to complicate this bill because there are a lot of moving pieces, a lot of things that are going to make it more difficult to pass. Some of those could complicate matters at a time that we should focus on the pieces in the bill right now and try to expand those pay-fors and get the growth up. Yeah, but Maya, where are you going to get the money to pay for this stuff? I mean, we know that they've got $1.5 trillion that they're working with, and the majority of that is going toward the, the business cuts, as you've written about, $900 billion. Uh, so, so where are you going to get the money to pay for it? What else is the low-hanging fruit to pay for this then? And let me say that I think the, side, the, the reforms on the corporate side of the tax code are the most important ones for growth. Yeah. Getting it right in terms of the corporate rate. Mm -hmm. One thing I really worry about is expensing needs to be permanent. It should not be a five-year thing that expires. That's a gimmick and that's a problem for investment. Getting the international taxation right, that's the stuff to focus on. On the individual side, there are still a lot of base broadeners that we could be looking at. That goes for the business side as well. So keep in mind, every year we have over one and a half trillion dollars in, in expenditures, credits, deductions, exclusions. Let's be more aggressive about the base broadening. I know you all were saying before that those are the unpopular parts of the tax and you want to get rid of them, but they're the parts that can actually improve the tax code. Because one thing I would say is in this country, we always seem to think that just because we like something, we need to give it a tax break. And I don't think that's how to use the tax code, and it's not pro-growth. So broadening the base and getting rid of a lot of those tax breaks would be a two for it, would help for gr with growth, and it would help offset the massive amount we're going to add to the debt. All right, I want to get Steve Forbes in here in a second, but, but let me ask you this. What about the family tax credit, which is costing $650 billion? Is, is, should that be there? If you want it to be there, you need to get rid of some of the other tax breaks that already exist in the code. Now is not the time for tax cuts, and I'll tell you why. I know we all want them. Who doesn't want a tax cut? But we have a near record level of debt, the highest it's been since World War II, deficits approaching a trillion dollars, a plan we're on track to already borrow $10 trillion over the next decade. Interest is the fastest growing part of the budget. If you want tax cuts, you have to cut spending. And in the budget that was just passed, there's not a single, single penny of spending cuts. So we need to be focusing on reform. Tax cuts cannot come until we have our fiscal house under, under control. And sort of the myth that we can grow our way out of this just by cutting taxes alone is something we may debate on this show, but I don't believe it's true. Steve Forbes. Uh, well, the CBO estimates, and the Republicans have accepted it, that they're only going to grow 2.6% over the next 10 years. You do the normal historic average, and you get a couple of trillion more. And the only way you're going to get uh, any changes on spending is when you have a booming economy. You had that in the late 1960s, and you had it in the 80s and 90s, especially after we had the, won the Cold War. So when, when have we ever... John Kennedy never tied tax cuts to spending cuts. Neither did Ronald Reagan. If you tie spending cuts to tax cuts, nothing happens. We've got to get the economy growing. And every time we've reduced tax across the board, like we did with Kennedy and Reagan, revenues went up, not down, contrary to what the Congressional Budget Office said. In the 80s, personal income tax receipts went up 50 percent when the tax cuts were phased in by 1983, between 83 and 89. So growth is it. Why do we hamper growth? Let's go for it. So let's go for growth, but let me disagree with a couple of points there. One, the Congressional Budget Office, I wish it were projecting 2.6% growth. It's projecting 1.9. Yeah, the GOP, and the reason the GOP pays, uh, should have made clear, the GOP, GOP base is 2.6. CBO is 1.9. But historically, yes. especially after a decade of punk growth of 1.8, we should easily be able to do three, three and a half, four percent. Yes. So a lot golly, of people. That pays for a lot of cuts. And a we'll, lot of people are putting out very hopeful and optimistic numbers about growth, but we need them to be based on the reality. And the one hard reality we have, we are an aging population. So the reason those growth numbers are so low is because of demographics, where people are moving into retirement, and we didn't reform our entitlement program, so that's going to be very costly, a negative effect on growth. 
we need to focus on growing the economy, but we can't kind of make up growth numbers. We need them to be based on what we've seen. What we have seen in the past, what you talked about in the past, past tax is whenever cuts. you remove burdens on the American people, the economy responds. You're starting to see some big changes coming in health care, which is going to make a dramatic difference in costs uh, in terms of uh, the, the growth we've had in the past. So we can't predict the future in the sense of knowing what's going to happen 10 years from now. But we always are an innovative nation when we reduce the tax burden. Let's reduce the tax burden, and you'll see revenues grow just as they've always done in the past. So a couple things. We can't predict the future, but given that the future's fiscal situation is so dire, right. I would urge us to be on the side of caution. And what we have seen in some of those tax cuts you mentioned, actually the revenues ended up being much lower than projected if you look at a share of GDP. That's why Ronald went back and had to raise some taxes. So I think we need to reform the code. Yeah. Again, that corporate side is really important. But let's do it with some caution so that we don't bust a huge hole in the budget just at a time when those baby boomers are retiring. If we look at all the models, right. those that uh, acknowledge how, how negative the effect of borrowing is on reform can actually find that deficit finance tax cuts can be negative on growth instead of positive. That would be terrible for the economy at a time when it's so important to get growth uh, up. Yeah, Maya, I want to get General Jack Keene in here because there are also new developments in terms of what we face uh, from a defense standpoint. And, and that's really important because we need to make sure the military is yeah. ready. We know that we have a lack of readiness in a lot of areas. But let me ask you this. Is it fair to say that you are raising taxes on a portion of the people to pay for that 20 percent corporate tax rate? Yes, it is, it's it's fair. It's fair to say that if you're doing tax reform, taxes will go up on some people right. and down on others. But the whole reason for that is if it excuse me, generates enough economic growth, the standard of living will go up. And yeah. that's really what we're shooting for. Not a tax but, cut. But you keep saying you want to cut an back in spending. Growth. But Maya, where do you I cut do. back? Where do you cut back in spending? I mean, there's Ugh. we know where the money is. It's in the entitlements. Absolutely. And so I assume we, we should be addressing the sequester as well, which is where the cuts on defense are too aggressive and the exactly. cuts on domestic discretionary. We need a bigger budget deal that really gets at these entitlement programs. The biggest are Social Security and Medicare. We are aging. Our health care costs are going up too much. We don't have the revenues to pay for all the promises we've made in those programs. And we keep kicking the can. You and yeah. I have been talking about this for years. We Every have. year we wait, it becomes more expensive. You know, the numbers don't lie. And just as, as tax cuts don't pay for themselves, the real issue here is entitlements. Right. That's what the numbers tell us. General, and we have to focus on that. Let me, let me get General uh, Jack Keenan here real quick. Well, I just wanted to comment. I mean, I, I think we've been overly cautious, you know, since the financial crisis. We've, the government has regulated business to the point where it's, it, it's a downturn. The, the fact is, it just ma making sense to me is if you put more money in the hands of the American people, that's going to create growth in this country, and the history is on our side in that. So and, I think and, you we, only, and you only get the environment for changes and things like entitlements is when you have a booming economy. Otherwise, politically, forget it. So we got to get you know, the economy booming, and then these other things are possible. Final word, Maya. Yeah. Well, Gally so I was going to say, there are times in a business cycle when you need stimulus. Now actually isn't one of them. So putting money in people's hands is less important so, so, so than don't growing let the productivity. Prosper. That's I, I don't see the logic of that. I would completely disagree. I want us to prosper, but I don't think borrowing our way to prosperity has ever worked. And I think the debt levels in this country, near record levels, are going to dampen any economic growth unless we really tackle and those the debt's issues. Grow but if Maya, we've boom. had a one and a half growth story for the last 10 years. I mean, we've been under 2%. How are you going to get growth going? If we had You're going to get growth we, going by a big debt deal, tax reform that's paid three and for, a regulatory... If we had in the oh, last 10 years, we'd have a budget surplus today. So there's a whole sort of comprehensive <laughs> economic plan. The president's laid <laughs> out worse. a lot of good ideas, <laughs> but borrowing to get there is kind of make-believe economics. It really is. If it sounds too good to be true, it is. We're going to have to do all the things that have been laid out in terms of regulatory reform, tax reform, yeah. spending more smart smartly, a debt deal, aging My more productively. <clears throat> That's how we get to higher growth. Maya, it's good to see you. Thank you so Thanks. much. We appreciate it very much. Maya McGinnis joining us.